Hey friend, welcome to my channel, Karina Lude, where we deep dive and break down the most iconic stars in history. If you're not yet subscribed, please be sure to do so and turn on your notifications so you never miss an upload. Today's video, we are talking about Miss Viola Davis. This is the one breakdown where I am so emotionally invested. You guys have no idea. Just doing her story, reading her book. I purchased her book, Finding Me, which is the greatest source of inspiration for this video. I was just in tears throughout the whole watching her videos and like I'm just so invested in her success. I don't think I've ever rooted <laughs> for a celebrity so much like I have Miss Viola Davis. And I know there's a lot of controversy with her new movie, The Woman King that came out, which I saw, I had the pleasure of seeing. And it is a phenomenal film. And I do know the history of Dahomey and I do know the controversy that people have. But in the movie, they did highlight some of the issues that many people online are saying that they didn't highlight. I'm not going to get too much into that because this is not the video for it. This is not and I know there will be a lot of think pieces in the comments already. I'll let you guys do your think pieces. There's a lot of justifiable complaints but I also would encourage everyone to see it but I do encourage everyone to definitely, like I said in my analytical and critical thinking video that I uploaded on my second channel, which is all about mental gems and these type of discussions. The link for that channel is in the description if you're interested in those type of videos. But when you're thinking analytically and critically, you don't just get your think pieces from social media, okay? You do the research yourself. You give everything a fair try. And I don't believe in boycotting things without seeing why for myself first. So just because someone say, hey, let's boycott this. Let me go see why are you saying boycotting this? And what does this have to like, you know, seeing things for yourself and coming to your own conclusion, doing your own research and understanding uh, the full complexities of every issue for yourself. And it may not be popular and there might be people that come for you, drag you, say mean things, especially online where people just don't understand neutrality or, you know, being open minded or researching things for yourself everybody wants you to just when they're angry about something you have to be angry with them too or else you're canceled and you're this you're that and it's just like listen <laughs> let everyone be individuals and discover things for themselves so I do encourage movie to me I was in tears in the theater and I do understand the complexities of it like I said I did the research on those I do understand the cruelty I am from Haiti where they actually teach in schools those type of history it's not new for us it's when I come to America I see a lot of Americans don't even understand their own history but in Haiti they did teach us these types Types of histories in school with the Dahomey tribes and uh, the slave trade and all the participants the African countries etc if we're going into it so this was not new knowledge for me and I already understood it but there is still a lot more complexities to it than just the think pieces that's on Twitter and me watching it with my own eyes I wouldn't boycott the film okay and it was a beautiful story it's almost as if unless we highlight the heroes we cannot tell the stories of the villain in our history also. And I feel like with history uh, and culture, you have to highlight both the villain and the heroes in the story. If you just focus on the heroes, that's how history repeats itself, right? If you just focus on the heroes, that's not really telling the whole story. And to tell the whole story, you must understand the complexities of the villain also, and also the complexities of the hero. That's how I kind of see it. And going and digging deeper, you may kind of grasp an understanding that kind of just give you a balanced view of everything. But away from this tangent, because this video is all about Miss Viola Davis. She is an American actress and producer, and she is the only African American to win the Academy Award, Primetime Emmy, and Tony Awards in the acting categories. And in 2012 and 2017, she was named one of Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential People in the World. And in 2020, she was ranked ninth on the New York Times list of the greatest actors of 21st century. 
century. Davis has been working with the Hunger Is campaign since 2014 to try to end childhood hunger in the United States and we're going to see why she's so passionate about this. Now let's get into her childhood. She was born in St. Matthews, South Carolina on August 11th, 1965. She is May Alice Davis and Dan Davis' daughter. She was born on the Singleton Plantation where her grandmother had a farm. They lived in a one-room house with no running water or indoor toilets. Her mother had an eighth grade education. Her father who groomed horses at a racetrack made it only to fifth grade. Her mother worked as a maid in a factory and at home. Davis' mother was the oldest of eight children. She left school after the eighth grade because she got pregnant, but also because she was beaten a lot in school. Viola Davis recalls saying, my mother pushed on with her life nonetheless. She was married and had her first child, my brother John Henry, at age 15. She is the second to last child out of a total of six, Viola. She has four sisters and a brother, and Viola's parents moved with her and two of her older siblings to Central Falls, Rhode Island soon after she was born. Her her other siblings stayed with their grandparents. When the family moved to Rhode Island, they got permission to live rent-free in a building slated to be demolished. And during the civil rights movement, her mother was also a civil rights worker. Davis was sent to jail with her mother when she was only two years old. Her mother had been detained during a civil rights protest. And she has said that during her childhood, she lived in abject poverty and dysfunction, and that she lived in a rat infested and condemned apartment. No money in the freezing cold meant laundry would would go often unwashed for weeks. That compounded with the bedwetting made for a home with a horrific smell. Davis writes in her book, Finding Me, which is an amazing read. She continued by writing, and it was infested with rats. In fact, the rats were so bad, they ate the faces of my dolls. After the first of the month, welfare checks arrived. Davis' parents would buy groceries, yet the food would quickly disappear. It was like, if you didn't eat now, it will be gone, and you're going to be hungry for the next Lord knows how long. Davis remembers. And according to Glamour magazine, she constantly plotted how to get food, befriending a boy whose mother would give her banana bread or joining a summer program for the free Kool-Aid and donuts. She even remembers digging through a dumpster. At school, she says, I was always so hungry and ashamed. I couldn't tap into my potential. I couldn't get at the business of being me. Her alcoholic, physically violent father also had multiple extramarital affairs. She recalls a time when her father took her to a woman's apartment and the woman opened the door with nothing on. However, when he stayed at home with his family, things were not healthier. Davis describes her dad's beatings of her mom in graphic details in trigger warning, okay? She writes in her book saying, then he just swung his hand and smashed a glass on the side of my mom's head and I saw the glass slice the upper side of her face near her eyes and blood just squirted out a lot of blood what I saw in my father was a man who alone and single could have kept his check and spent it all on women and booze but he wasn't alone she shares during my childhood my father had five children to feed minus my sister Danielle who is almost 12 years younger than me every penny he worked for had to go to us even with the hard labor and during the disrespect from white horse owners it was never enough so he raged, end quote. Viola Davis recalls her and her siblings desperately wanting her mother to kick her father out and move on, but her mother never did, and that trauma stayed with her for a long time. Viola recalls, I wish that mama could have acquired the tools to imagine a life free from that sort of pain, rejecting everything her family had instilled in her about marriage and never giving up, never leaving your man even if he cheats, putting up with abuse. She writes, I imagine that if she had the language and the wherewithal, she would have simply said, help me, guide me. But even grown with multiple children, she was still that little child, 15-year-old black girl from the backwoods of South Carolina who got pregnant and married before she could legally drive. Unfortunately, Viola had more to worry about than just her father, okay? Her brother behaved monstrously against her and her sisters, and this is a trigger warning. I'm letting you guys know, okay? So she writes this. She says, my three sisters and I were often left unsupervised with my brother in our apartment. Sensual curiosity would cross the line, David writes. He would chase us, we would lose, and eventually other inappropriate behavior occurred that had a profound effect. 
School was no refuge either. She just couldn't catch a break. She recalls how in the third grade, eight or nine white boys in my class made it their daily end of school ritual to chase me like dogs hunting prey. They would throw things, pine cones, rocks, even bricks, and call her name and racial slurs when she ran from them. She felt like she was running for her life. She goes on to say, there is an emotional abandonment that comes with poverty and being black. The weight of generational traumas and having to fight for your basic needs doesn't leave room for anything else. You just believe you're the leftovers, end quote. Her childhood was just filled with so much sadness. She recalls that period of her life saying, that period of my life was filled with shame. The feeling you get in the pit of your stomach when you have stage fright or humiliation. Shame completely eviscerates you, destroys any sense of pride you may have in yourself. With all that trauma, which was very hard to read, and I'm sure hard for you to listen to, you the viewers, Viola Davis found a lot of hope in Cicely Tyson, who I did an amazing breakdown for Cicely Tyson also, which I will link in the end cards in the end screen so you can watch after this video. It is such a good video. Davis says that when a black woman like her finally appeared on TV, like Cicely Tyson, it was like a miracle. She describes going on saying, she had a long neck and was beautiful, dark skin, glistening with sweat, high cheekbones, thick full lips, and clean short afro, Davis writes. It was like a hand reached out for mine and I finally saw my way out. See, this is why I always say representation matters. Davis attended Central Falls High School where she developed a love for stage acting. She met her first influential acting coach, Ron Stetson, through the federally funded Upward Bound program when she was a teenager. Major. While hanging out with Davis and her sister, Stetson overheard the two of them complaining about how unattractive they were. Wait, you both don't think you're pretty? He asked, which was Stetson. You both are effing beautiful. I always thought that. You don't see it? It was something Davis had needed to hear her whole life. She said, it's that life-changing thing that happens when you're seen, valued, and adored, Davis writes. When you are a dark-skinned girl, no one simply adores you. After high school, Davis attended Rhode Island College and majored in theater. She graduated in 1988. She attended Juilliard's Drama Division, Group 22, for four years. Davis played Dennis in an off-Broadway production of As You Like It with Elizabeth McGovern in 1992. Davis made her Broadway debut in August Wilson's Seven Guitars as Vera opposite Keith David. The play opened at Walter Kerr Theater on March 6th. Her performance was widely praised. Davis continued acting off-Broadway in TV shows like NYPD Blue and New York Undercover. She appeared in the Pentagon Wars in August Wilson's King had lead the second. Her performance earned her a Tony Award and a Drama Desk Award. She won another Drama Desk Award for Intimate Apparel by Lynn Notage. She appeared in Kate and Leopold and Antoine Fisher. She also appeared in Far From Heaven, starring Julianne Moore and Dennis Quaid. Her television work includes recurring roles in Law and Order, Special Victims Units, and Traveler in Century City, and a guest appearance in Badge from Law and Order Criminals Intent. In June of 2003, Davis married actor Julianne. Julius Tenen. She recalled having a conversation with her now husband, you know, Julius Tenen, who told her, I'm just looking for someone who wants to be with me. He said, I want to be with you. And I said, that's her talking. I know, but I just want someone who's emotional. And he replied, well, I'm emotionally available. And we were just silent. And I stared at him and I knew that he was a blessing. That's what's most important. I knew he was the blessing. If I didn't see that, if I hadn't done the work, I probably would have sabotaged it, but he's been the biggest gift in my life. The couple adopted a baby girl in 2011 and named her Genesis. Davis also fills the role of stepmother to two of Tennant's children from previous relationships. And despite all the accolades since, Davis says it has taken seven years of therapy, along with support from her husband of 11 years at the time, Julius Tennant, and the adoption of their daughter, Genesis, for her to fully accept her life in all of its success, failure, beauty, and mess. Davis plays Miss Miller in the 2008 film adaptation of John Patrick Shanley's Play Doubt with Meryl Streep, Philip Seymour Hoffman, and Amy Adams. Though Davis had only one scene in the film, she was a highlight. So on June 30th, 2009, Davis was inducted into the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts, and Science. Davis returned to Broadway in 2010 in Offenses Revival with Denzel Washington. I love that also. And the New York Times, Ben Brantley praised Davis' performance. Davis, who won a Tony for Wilson's King Headley II, may win another for this one. Her face is 
bone tired and sensual, end quote. Davis won her second Tony on June 13th, 2010. You go, girl. She won the Tony for Best Performance by a Leading Actress in a Play after Felicia Rashad, which I did an amazing breakdown for Felicia Rashad also. I have that in the end card as well. Davis played Abilene Clark, a housemaid in 1960s Mississippi, and Tate Taylor's film The Help, co-starring Emma Stone, Octavia Spencer, Bryce Dallas Howard, and Jessica Chastain. Davis said her performance channeled her mother and grandmother. I think I channeled my mom's spirit. I channeled my grandmother's spirit and honored that contributions to my life and others but there was a lot of backlash from the black community because of the position this role plays to black characters and I must admit I did kind of agree with some of the criticism okay it was not it was not an uplifting role for black characters in there and uh it, it was not my favorite uh, film of hers. Uh, she has since expressed regret over taking the role. While she still admires her co-workers, she doesn't think the story or portrayal of the black characters was accurate, but Davis won two Screen Actors Guild Awards and was nominated for an Oscar, Golden Globe, and BAFTA. Okay, Davis was cast as the lead in Peter Norwalk's pilot, How to Get Away with Murder, which I know everyone loves from Shonda Rhimes, right? She played Annalise Keaton, a tough criminal defense attorney and professor who in September 2014 it debuted and it took the media by storm, right? Davis won the Emmy for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Drama Series for How to Get Away with Murder in September 2015. She was nominated for another Emmy in 2016. Davis won two SAG Awards for Outstanding Female Actor in the Drama Series in 2014 and 2015. Her performance on the show earned her Golden Globe and Critics' Choice Award nominations. So Meryl Streep presented Viola Davis with a star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame on January 6, 2017. Davis said, it's like my life flashing before my eyes. God has blessed my life abundantly. Davis was featured on Time's 100 Most Influential People list for the second time, the first time being in 2012. Streep referred to Davis as having her gifts as an artist are unassailable, undeniable, deep, rich, and true. Her ability to identify and speak about culture is what makes her great. Davis won Artist of the Year at Harvard in March 2017. She co-starred with Chadwick Boseman in his last film in George C. Wolfe's biographical drama, Miss Ma Rainey, Black Bottom. She received critical acclaim, a Screen Actors Guild Award for Outstanding Performance by a Female Actor in a Leading Role, her sixth Golden Globe Award nomination, and her second Academy Award nomination for Best Actress, her fourth overall. She became the most nominated Black actress in Oscars history and the first to be nominated for Best Actress twice. Davis executive produces The First Lady and plays Michelle Obama in it, and it debuted in 2022. And she has faced a lot of criticism. Yeah, we're, we're not gonna go there, okay? Like I said, I'm not gonna cancel her. There's nothing y'all can say that can make me cancel her. But she, <laughs> you guys were wrong. Y'all know y'all was wrong. <laughs> I could not escape the memes. <laughs> Y'all just terrible. But Davis recalled social media criticism and called it incredibly hurtful and said, as a leader, I must make bold choices. That was an extremely bold choice. I'm not gonna lie, it was extremely bold. I was taken back a little bit, but you know. And I want to end this on just such a positive note because look at this woman. Look how much she overcame. She writes in her book, How Did I Claw My Way Out of Poverty? There is no out. Every painful memory, every mentor, every friend and foe served as a chisel, a leap pad that has shaped me. The imperfect but blessed sculpture that is Viola is still growing and still being chiseled. I own everything that has ever happened to me. The parts that were a source of shame and actually my warrior fuel, she says. I see people the way they walk, talk, laugh and grieve in their silence in a way that is hyper focused because of my past. I am an artist because there's no separation from me and every human being that has passed through the world, including my mom. I have a great deal of compassion for other people, but mostly for myself. That would not be the case if I did not reconcile that little eight-year-old girl and find me. I'm holding her now, my eight-year-old self, holding her tight, she concludes. She is squealing and reminding me, don't worry, I'm here to beat anybody's ASS who messes with our joy. Viola, I got this, end quote. So another shameless plug for her book, Finding Me. It's out now. You can purchase it on Amazon, Kindle, and any bookstores or listen to it on audiobook. And I just feel so blessed to know her story. Like what a woman, what an icon. This 
this is beyond relatable. I love Viola so much and I am rooting for her continued success. She had worked so hard to be where she is and she is a living legend, one of the greatest actresses of all time. So let's appreciate her and give her her flowers while she's still here. Don't wait till she dies, you know what I mean? And if you haven't seen The Woman King yet, please don't listen to social media. Go check out the movie. I'll say this about The Woman King. I was at looking at the women I don't know because they did portray them in a masculine nature strong and fierce but they were so mesmerizing okay <laughs> they were so mesmerizing and beautiful on screen captivating I was wow stunned by just the sheer strength and power and it was very feminine to me that kind of strength and power from their nails it was very fierce the movie really took me back nostalgic just oh my goodness i encourage everyone to see it i want to see this movie win every award okay that's all i'm gonna say i'm not canceling her y'all can cancel her if y'all want to but miss viola davis you will never be canceled by me okay you have my full support uh no matter what film you do you are an inspiration and i'm sure i'm not the only one who loves this woman drop a heart in the comments for Ms. Viola Davis, okay? Give her her flowers in the comments because you know it's going to be flooded with a lot of extra hate. So make, make sure you put some positivity because every trailer I've seen, everything is just a lot of hate towards her. So flood the comments with positivity for her. If you like the music you're listening to in the background, the link is in the description. Support my big bro and his new single that he dropped. Link is in the description. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and comment below who else would you guys like to see. I can't wait to upload the next video for you guys. I'm sure you guys will love that as well. So you won't want to miss that one. So turn on your notifications. I love you guys so much. Until next time.